I've read Prince Harry's book Spare twice. And I've got some questions for Harry. Prince Harry has made a lot about the fact that he didn't receive enough affection from Prince Charles, now King Charles, when he was growing up, but in particular the post-Diana years when he was a teenager. Now I'm going to read you one such moment and I want you to leave a comment down below to see what you think. Okay, here we go. Going to bed, Pa, he'd always shout back cheerfully, I'll be there shortly, darling boy. True to his word, minutes later, he'd be sitting on the edge of my bed. He never forgot that I didn't like the dark, so he'd gently tickle my face until I fell asleep. I have the fondest memories of his hands on my cheeks, my forehead, then waking up to find him gone magically, the door always considerately left open a crack. Now, does that sound like a child that didn't receive affection from his father? Someone that wasn't receiving affection from his father would have got, okay, good night, have a good night's sleep. They wouldn't even come up. And if they did come up, they would sit on the edge of the bed for maybe 30 seconds and then say, well, good night, pat on the leg and then go out and slam the door. But this is a father that came up night after night after night was, could be relied upon, was consistent, and stroked his face until he fell asleep. I cannot understand how you can receive affection like that as a child and twist it. Also, a more disturbing pattern that every time he does something where he could be looked down upon because it was mean or foolish or idiotic or unthinking or put other people in a difficult position, he always brings up his mother. At that particular point, so it's like, do the unfortunate action, then distract diversion with Diana. And I'll give you an example of that in his own book. The next night, as everyone tucked into dinner, I tiptoed out of the mill tent. I went down the footpath 50 metres into the kitchen tent and poured a whole teacup of Tabasco into Marco's bowl of pudding. Now, okay, a prank, you know, practical joke, that's fine. Um but a whole teacup of Tabasco in someone's pudding, that's, um, anyway, you can make up your own mind about that. But I think it's a little over the top, right? But so that could be perceived as a bit mean, let's, let's say, by some people. So he covers himself by saying, it was bread and butter pudding, mummy's favourite. I'll just leave that sitting out there. So he goes back into the mill tent. They're in a, in a jungle situation, sort of on a safari situation. And um, they go back to the tent and the bread and butter pudding is about to be served. But something happens. Someone cried, what the? And in unison, we all turned. Just outside the open tent was a tawny tail swishing through the air. Leopard. Everyone froze except me. I took a step towards it. Well, I'm sorry, Harry, but that just makes you an idiot. Everyone froze because they were trying to allow the leopard to peacefully go on their way. If you make any uh, movement, it attracts the leopard's attention because the leopard's looking for food, looking for prey. And if the leopard had have ended up in the tent they all would have probably got severely injured or someone could have died. So it was quite a serious situation. And as he takes that foolish, idiotic step towards the leopard, while everyone else froze sensibly, Marco, the one he was going to punk with the pudding, puts a hand on his shoulder and basically stops him and saves his life. Now, it was a serious situation because all the adults in the tent, you know, were upset and sort of, breathing heavily after the moment passed. So there's that situation. And then here we are, he's got to bring mummy into it because he's done an idiotic, dangerous thing that has put everyone else at risk. I was thinking about mummy. That leopard was clearly a sign from her, a messenger she'd sent to say, all is well and all will be well. What? 
I mean, that is a stretch. Leave a comment down below if you think that that is a stretch. To me, that was ridiculous. It was a stretch. The leopard was not indicating all will be well and all is well. The leopard situation indicated that your father organised an aid to protect and care for you and he did his job. He stopped you walking towards a leopard, for God's sake. And then he even, or the ghostwriter, thinks, oh, that comes across as a bit wackadoodle. So then they qualify it, last sentence of the paragraph, by saying, what if mummy were to come out of hiding at last only to learn that a younger son had been eaten alive? Yes. Yes, that, that probably was the more accurate meaning of the leopard, Harry. I would say that that was the more accurate interpretation. On page 67, he's straddling the toilet at school, smoking pot, staring out a window and having a conversation with the fox, as you do when you smoke pot when you're straddling the loo at school. But on page 70, he's looking at Marco, his trusted aide, confident friend, protector, and completely denying that he ever takes drugs. Three pages. Three pages between the action of smoking the drug to page 70, so it's page 67, he's smoking the drug, page 70, he's looking into the face of a trusted representative of him and his family and a friend of his, someone he was close to, and denying it. So Marco goes back to the editor, says, no, 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 Prince Harry's never touched drugs. And the editor says, oh, what a load of cods wallop. I have good sources. I know it's true. I'm going ahead with the story. And Harry, if you're going to do an action, leave more than three pages between the action and the denial. I suggest leaving at least 40 pages between the action and then the denial of the action, because that, that doesn't have any more plausibility, but you might, you just might get away with it. So I hope you enjoyed my insight as a vintage reader into Spare. If you did enjoy it, let me know with a thumbs up and a comment, and I'll do a few more because honestly, there are so many gems in this book. And I, I really think that it's good to hear a review of a book by someone who has really read it. Until next time, I hope you enjoyed your vintage reads and your vintage readers. Bye. Thank you.